Deuteronomy chapter number 20. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid. Be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Brother Sammy, be so kind to take us to the throne of grace and pray for us. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Help us, Lord. Mm. Mm, yes, God help us. Yes. Yes, Father. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sammy. Uh, there's a few things I want to show you as a way of introduction to the thought tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, the challenge that may befall Israel. Now this is the instruction God has given Moses uh, and he's covering in uh, Deuteronomy any circumstance that they may come across. Uh, and here we find that God gives instructions uh, and notice the challenge. Uh, he says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots uh, and a people more than thou. Notice he didn't say, if thou goest out to battle. Notice he didn't say that it may come to pass that one day you may go to battle. Uh, he said, when thou goest to battle. Uh, uh, the Bible says, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Uh, I don't care who you are, you, you're not exempt of problems. Uh, and you can mark her down, uh, you're going to face some battles until Jesus comes. Uh, happy day when the trumpet sounds. Uh, and all of our problems will cease. Uh, but until that day, uh, you're going to face some battles. Uh, you're going to face some troubles. Uh, you're going to face some heartaches. A uh, uh, marker down battles are raging. We see the challenge. Uh, now notice some things about the challenge. Notice there will be a fight. He didn't say when you go to uh, 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 sit down and crochet a blanket with somebody. He said, when thou goest out to battle, you're going to have a fight on your hands. Now, can I say, sometimes our fights are just struggles. Sometimes it seems like just everything goes wrong. I mean, you can be living right, doing right, uh, uh, seeking the Lord, reading your Bible, coming to church. It just seems like uh, 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 you're constantly uh, 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 trying to go forward, but it seems like something's against you and you're going backwards. Uh, sometimes it's just a struggle. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, 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 it seems like one thing compounds on another thing, uh, and it's just struggles uh, uh, that you're fighting. Sometimes it's storms. There's all kinds of storms. I preached on that one time. You got thunderstorms. You can have hailstorms. You can have snowstorms. Didn't we have a big one today, huh? It was over before it started, huh? You can have snowstorms. You can have hurricanes. You can have uh, dust storms. You can have wind storms. There's all kinds of storms, tornadoes, all kinds of things. Uh, and it doesn't matter uh, what somebody else thinks about your storm. If you're in a storm, uh, it's subject to turn your life upside down. Uh, I'm sure Brother Clint's aunt didn't sign up for having retina surgery this week, but she had to have it. Hmm? 
I'm sure that customer of yours uh, would never dream that their boy or girl would have to have an intestinal uh, 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 transplant. Who ever heard of such a thing? Uh, I mean, just terrible. Uh, 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 little Jackson having cancer. Uh, 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 folks uh, uh, faced with great adversity. Uh, now listen, uh, when you hear that, it might not affect you, but when that storm knocks on your door, it's a storm in your life and you got a fight on your hands. Sometimes it's a struggle, sometimes it's a storm, and sometimes your fight is just for survival. Your very existence is on the line. Everything that you stood for and everything that you care about is in the fight. Can I say? The challenge, uh, there's a fight. Can I say this challenge also comes with a foe. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies. Now enemies come in all kinds of packages. Sometimes an enemy can be a neighbor. Sometimes it can be a co-worker. Sometimes it can be a family member. Sometimes it can be a church family member. Somebody, sometimes it can be somebody goes to another church who becomes your enemy. Mm, say, can I say sometimes uh, 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 it's people in the community. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, it's politicians. Sometimes uh, it's lobbyists behind the politicians. Sometimes uh, uh, the very legal system uh, 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 may be going against what the Bible stands uh, for. Uh, and when you make a stand on the Bible, your very freedom may be at risk. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, my dear friends, your enemy might be the sorry, no good devil himself. Uh, uh, but mark her down. Now, uh, you're going to be challenged with a fight, and your fight has a foe, my dear friends. Uh, I remember preaching several years ago about the Christian life not being easy. That's a battlefield. I even made a comment. I said, how come we never sing that song, Onward Christian Soldiers, anymore? And then Brother Clint got up and sang it the next week. He was paying attention. Good job, Clint. Way to go. I'm not going to smack you today. I got to think about that later. I felt real bad. I smacked your face off the other day. I'm sorry. But Jesus is good anyway, huh? But boy, if you listen to most teaching and most preaching and most so-called Christians, everybody's so wimpy today, and everything's about their little feelings getting hurt. Can I say, living a Christian life, you're in a battlefield. Why do you think the Bible's called the sword of the Spirit? My dear friends, we're to wield the sword and go to work and to fight the good fight of faith and we're to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And friends, it's a fight. It's a battle, my dear friends. Can I say, uh, there's a foe to the fight. But sometimes you're in the fight, and you got the foe, and it looks futile. Look what it says. Look what the Bible says. When thou goest to battle against thine enemies and seest, be careful what you look around and see. Uh, the just don't walk by sight. You get in trouble when you get to looking at things. Can I just stop right there and chase a rabbit? Don't happen anymore, but back when we was in the old building, we had folks that constantly want to know how many people were coming to church. Uh, one of the first things we did is we took the brag board down when I became a pastor. How many was in Sunday school and how many was at church and what was the offering and what was all that and, and everything. Hey, listen, uh, 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 they were always concerned about uh, how many folks were showing up and uh, 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 how many's here and how many's doing this and how many. Can I help you with something? Uh, if God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, and if it's just you and Jesus, you are the majority, huh? We get in trouble when we get to counting them. Go look at what happened to David when he went and numbered the people. Are you listening? Uh, and when I met with the banker uh, 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 folks here just last week, uh, talking about maybe the new project, uh, one of the first things they asked me, how many are you running? Well, I said, what I always say. I don't know. They always look at you funny. You're the pastor. You're supposed to know. I said, no, nah, I don't know. 
And then I always say this, David numbered the people and got in big time trouble with the Lord. I always want to stay on the good side of the Lord. They have no argument for that. Huh? I say we run exactly how many the Lord wants us to have that day. Hmm? Uh, but listen, look what happens in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse number 1. There's a battle. There's a fight. There's a foe, thine enemies. He goes, and see us. You better be careful what you're looking at. And you see us horses and chariots. And here's the worst part. And a people more than thou. Sometimes in this challenge, it looks futile. You remember Gehazi, Elisha's servant? He got up. I guess he opened the door to get the morning paper. I don't know. He opened the door. And he saw the whole Syrian army encamped around about him uh, and his knees began to shake. Uh, and he cried out, Elisha said, what's going on? He says, hey, the whole host of Syrian armies here, we're in trouble. And Elisha said, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. That servant thought he's crazy, kind of like what some of you all think about me sometimes. And uh, Elisha just prayed a simple prayer. He said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Yeah. And he looked up in the hills all around. There are chariots of fire. Are you listening? Yeah. And God delivered that whole army into Elisha's hands without an arrow being shot, without any confrontation. They, they led the, uh, uh, the captain, the host in because uh, uh, God struck them with blindness. Huh? By the way, that's still our God. Things look futile in this battle. We see the challenge. Now notice the charge. Look again in verse number 1. He says, Be not afraid. Uh, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. What a charge. He says, When you're in a battle, when it's a, a struggling battle, or a battle of a storm, or a battle for survival, no matter what you're facing, he said, Don't be afraid. Hmm. Isn't that just like God? When your whole world's being turned up upside down, Miss Sino, you want him to give you a word that's going to say, I'm going to be there in the fire with you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do No, he just says, don't be afraid. Yep. Well, what a blessing. Yes, sir. Hmm? Don't be afraid. What a charge. You know why it's a charge? Because our first instinct is to be afraid. Yes, hmm? Our first instinct is to worry. Our first instinct is to say, Oh, Lord! He said, Don't be afraid. He's telling them ahead of time, When thou goest to battle, and you're going to battle, don't be afraid. Hmm? So we see the challenge. We see the charge. Now notice they're continuing. Look what it says in verse 2. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle. What a blessing. I know they're not Baptists. Hmm? <laughs> If God tells you we're going to a battle, most Baptists say, I ain't showing up that day. No. Uh, hey, there is something to them Jews. God told Jeremiah they're stiff neck and uncircumcised heart. But one thing's for sure, when the battle's on, they do show up for it. What a blessing, huh? They continued to the battle. He said, be not afraid. They said, okay, let's go on to battle. Hmm? Notice, if you will, the command in verse 3. And this is what the high priest was supposed to say to them. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Here's the command. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Wow. I want to tell you, there's been things I've faced in my life, i failed that command. It's one thing it's when it's you, Brother Donald. It's another thing when it's your boy. When Trevor's facing something, all of a sudden you forget that command then. All of a sudden you are worried. You are terrified. You are trembling. I'm glad God winks at our ignorance, aren't you? But God commanded them when they faced their enemy not to be afraid, not to tremble, not to give it a thought. Mm-mm. And then notice, if you will, the comfort God gives. Look in verse number 4. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies. For what reason? To save you. You see, when God saved you from sin, 
That was just the first installment of God's grace in your life. God just didn't save you so you wouldn't have to go to hell. God became your Savior, not only uh, uh, for your soul not to go to hell, but He saves your life. Uh, and friends, He is for you, not against you. Uh, and no matter what you face, He's still your Savior. Uh, and He'll show up and go with you sure. to every battle. Hmm? Yep. Well, I got to reading this, got to thinking about this, and I got thinking as I was reading this about folks going through things, folks facing things. Again, it may seem insignificant to somebody else, but if you, it, you're facing it and it troubles you, it, it's significant. Yes, I got to thinking about all these things, and I want to preach really out of verse number three, where he says, Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. I want to preach on this little thought tonight. I want to preach on fear reducing faith. We'd be a fool to say that we're never afraid of anything. But there's something that'll cause your fear to reduce. It's a little word called faith. And what God is charging them and what God is commanding them in these verses when they go to a battle is to have faith. Not to fear, but have faith. And so, with that thought in mind, let's look at faith a little bit tonight. We can spend a lot of time on fear. We know all about fear. Uh, but what will cause our fear to dissipate and what will cause us to propel us to go on for God is something called faith. And can I say, if you've got faith, there's not an enemy you'll ever face that will overthrow you or overtake you. Well, let me give you a few things about faith. And when I talk about faith, I'm talking about true faith. Everybody believes. You can go down here and knock on somebody's door and say, Are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I believe in God. Uh, there's a bunch of them running around with ashes on their head today. Are you listening? Uh, they believe in something. That's not true faith. Are you listening? I don't need an ash because I've got Jesus' blood. But let me give you some things about true faith. Can I say, first of all, true faith must be cultivated. And God has given every man a measure of faith. But if you won't do anything with that faith, you'll die and go to hell. Amen. Or if you just exercise that faith enough to get saved, you're going to be a very anemic, weak Christian, and you're going to fear at every battle you face. Yeah. But true faith must be cultivated. The Bible says, and I quote it a lot, but Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Why is the preaching and teaching of the word of God so important? Why is daily reading of the word of God so important? Why is daily studying and weekly studying of the word of God so important? Preacher, why do everything you do centering around the Bible? Uh, preacher, why do we uh, make certain that when the ladies have uh, uh, their ladies meeting, there's a lesson taught from the Bible? Uh, why is the Bible so important? Because without the Bible, uh, your faith will never grow. Uh, it takes faith to put uh, the Bible to produce faith and faith to overcome your battles my dear friends uh, it starts with the Bible huh? now, unfortunately a lot of people hear with their ears but not their heart and it shows because when the battle's on they're retreating but those that have faith will fight their battles faith must be cultivated 1 Corinthians 2, 4 says this, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. You wonder why a lot of these big super-duper churches don't produce people that can fight a battle? Because all they are geared toward is the intellect of the one delivering the message. Paul said, my speech was not 
with enticing words of man's wisdom. It was in the demonstration of the Spirit with power. You know how many times uh, 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 educated preachers uh, have had uh, 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 to sit under me and they look at me with a scowl. Who's that guy? Why is he spit? Why is he slobber? Uh, why is he uh, 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 raise his voice? Uh, well, friends, this is the way God called me. I don't have any other excuse. Uh, this is the preach he put in me. Uh, and as long as he gives me breath, this is the preach going to come out of me. Uh, hey, Hey, uh, uh, God did something for me one day uh, and I hadn't got over it uh, and I want the world to know how good he is. Uh, Amen. Hmm. I've never heard anybody say, boy, I've grown as a Christian because that preacher spits. But when there's the presence of God behind the word of God, their faith grows based on what God did in their hearts. It's got to be cultivated. It's got to be centered on the Word of God and the power of God behind the Word of God, the Holy Ghost. In this area, you say Holy Ghost, a lot of people get real nervous. Uh, well, that's what the Bible calls Him. Oh, I've heard this, this intellect cry. He's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and he's also the Holy Ghost. Uh, and in this area, there was teaching about 30 years ago that the power's in the Word. And anybody can get up and bring something from the Word and God's going to use it because God's promised for His Word not to return void. Well, can I help you something? The Word of God is powerful. It's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. But I can get the sharpest sword in the world and put it on that table and it won't cut anybody unless it's wielded. And the Word of God must be wielded by the Holy Ghost. And then it does a work in people's hearts. And can I say, you can volunteer all you want to, but if God don't call you, God won't use you. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything, huh? And the word of God won't to return void when God has sent it. Remember what he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah's day? The priest had said, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. And God said, And I had not sent them. Well, there you go. Hmm? Amen. God didn't speak through them. Right. He said, They've spoken, but I haven't spoken. Right. Hmm? Anyway, that didn't cost you anything. Good. Faith has to be cultivated. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1 says this, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. What happened to their faith? It grew. It was cultivated. It got bigger and bigger and bigger. Faith is like a muscle. If you never actually work your muscles. Brother Doug's back there talking to him about Pilates after church. He'll, he'll give you a full instinct on all of that. huh? He'll give you an exhortation on Pilates. huh? But your muscles have to be torn and then rested and fed with water, nutrients, and then they come back and they get bigger. And then you got to tear them again. Then they get bigger and get bigger. You got to exercise them. What does the doctor tell every one of us we need to do? Exercise, huh? Why? Because it helps your health. Well, your faith, if it's not exercise, you'll be a very weak Christian. Hmm? Oswald Chambers said this. He says, Faith is the indefinable certainty of God behind everything and is the one thing the Spirit of God makes clearer and clearer as we go on. Chambers also said this, The turning points in the spiral ascent of faith are first, obedience to the effectual call of God, and second, the culmination of unreserved resignation to God. Faith doesn't believe that God can. Faith believes God will. Mm. Uh, listen, let me just put it in hillbilly terms. This is the best definition. I never can, and I can't do any better than this. Usually I use a green chair. Here, I'm going to update my illustration. I'm going to use this chair. We well, can look at that chair. See, it's made out of metal. 
See, it's got two hinges on it. See, it's got a nice padded cushion. It's got four sturdy, strong legs. And I can say, by faith, I know if I sit in there, it's going to hold my 210 pounds up. That's not faith. That's logic. I've done reason why it will hold me up. Faith is when you look at it and it doesn't have any legs and you say, it's going to hold me up. Faith is when you trust in what you cannot see. Hmm? We see then that faith must be cultivated if you're going to overcome your fears. Can I say secondly, faith is challenged. Faith that is not challenged isn't worth anything. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and verse number 4, Paul wrote to that church saying this, So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. They had to go through persecutions and tribulations to grow their faith. Faith must be challenged. In Hebrews chapter 11, that great uh, uh, chapter, the Hall of Faith chapter, it says this down about verse 32. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, uh, who through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, uh, stopped the mouths of lions, uh, quenched the violence of fire, uh, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, uh, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, uh, women received their dead, raised to life again, uh, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Uh, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Uh, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonments. Uh, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, uh, were slain with the sword. Uh, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, uh, afflicted, tormented, uh, of whom the world was not worthy. Uh, they wandered in deserts uh, and in mountains uh, and in dens and caves of the earth uh, and, uh, and these all having obtained a good report through faith uh, receive not the promise uh, faith must be challenged the reason he said when thou goest to battle they were going to have to prove who they were they was going to have to prove they were God's chosen people can I say, anybody can run up a little blue and white flag with a red cross on it and say, we're Christian. But God proves who his people are. Faith must be challenged. The great missionary George Mueller said this, God delights to increase the faith of his children. Trials, obstacles, difficulties, and sometimes defeat are the very food of faith. Hmm? Faith, my dear friends, is cultivated. It's challenged. Can I say this? Faith is critical. Hebrews 11:6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You could have all knowledge and no faith, you will not please God. You can have all power and not faith and you won't please God. Faith is critical. Because without faith, you'll not have the blessings and the touch of God in your life. Hmm? Chambers said this about that. It is never our merit God looks at, but our faith. If there is only one strand of faith amongst all the corruption within us, God will take hold of that one strand. Hmm. God help us to let our faith be cultivated. Let our faith be challenged because it is so critical. Can I say this about faith? It's conditional. Just because you had faith yesterday don't mean you got faith today. Faith is conditional. Just because uh, 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 your relatives has faith doesn't mean you got faith. Just because your daddy had faith doesn't mean you have faith. It's conditional. Everything in the Word of God is conditional. God always bases everything on conditions. 
2 Chronicles 17, 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and, and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. Everything in the Bible is conditional, and so is faith. The Bible says in Matthew 17, verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You can go all day long and tell a mountain to be moved, it won't be moved without faith. Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Can I say this? He doesn't find much. There's not many mountains being moved. You would not believe some of the phone calls I get about people that have hangnails and they want me to call the prayer chain and stop your life to call over their hang, to cry and, and beg God to help them with their hangnail. Yet God says we can move mountains if we got faith the size of a seed of a grain of mustard seed. Very small. Little faith moves big mountains. No faith can't do anything. It's conditional. Matthew 21, 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith. Notice both times he says if. It's conditional. If ye have faith and doubt not, uh-oh, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, it shall be done. It's conditional. James 1 says this, verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. It's conditional. We must truly trust and not doubt. That's faith. And then I thought about this. True faith is contagious. Paul wrote to Rome to, in the book of Romans, Romans 1 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. There's so many, so many wonderful aspects to that story. How that he was brought before Saul, and Saul went to put his armor on him. Saul's head and shoulders taller than anybody in Israel. David, a lad, I imagine that armor looked ridiculous on, on David. He said, no, I, I got to use what's proven. He said, I killed a... A lion and a bear, I'll just use what's proven. And we know the sling and the stone. Boy, I like preaching on them five stones out of the brook. And Goliath had four brothers and all that's involved in that. And how much water went over them stones to make them smooth. I like it. He rears back and lets that sling uh, 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 go and that stone goes and it hits Goliath. The only place he didn't have armor, right in the forehead. Mm -mm. An amazing thing happens. When you hit somebody, they're going to go backwards. Not Goliath, he fell forward. Why? Because God's the one smacked him from behind. And David took Goliath's own sword and chopped his head off. There's so much in there. There's so much faith. Uh, I mean, David said, you, uh, you know, you come to me with spear and sword, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And David ran to the battle. But the real essence of faith started when David showed up. He's got supplies, some bread and cheese and hot fudge cake and cheese conies from Mama for his brothers. And for 40 days, that uncircumcised Philistine had come out there and cussed God and defied the army of Israel, said, send me a man. Well, true to form, he come out there and did it again. David sitting there giving out the supplies. He said, who is that uncircumcised Philistine? And he looks at his brothers and he says, is there not a cause? He said, I'll go whip that giant. Uh, 
Never does David waver that he's going to take that sucker out. He said, that guy's cussing God. He's not going to do it in my presence. Boy, give us some Christians like that today. Huh? But when David hit that sucker with the stone and, and Goliath fell, what happened to the nation of Israel's army? There was a shout. They all found their swords and they whipped Philistines all day long. You know why? Faith is contagious. Hmm? When somebody makes a stand, you'll find out you're not alone. Exercising faith not only pleases God, but it instills something in other people. That's why I say during an invitation period, you need to be real sensitive. If God tells you to go to the altar, he might just want you to come to the altar to tell him how wonderful he is. But that might encourage somebody else to exercise their faith who God wants to move uh, to get a little closer to him, uh, but they just don't have enough faith to do it, but they see you move, uh, and they don't see anybody throwing these stones at you, uh, and they say, well, they can do it, I can do it. Uh, then they move, then somebody else moves, somebody else moves, and before you know it, a sinner sit back there under conviction. Uh, they move and get gloriously born again. Faith is contagious. Huh? Do you know why God doesn't call the faithless to the ministry? Because people take on the personality behind the one who stands behind the desk. You show me a dead preacher, I'll show you a dead church. You show me a shady preacher, I'll show you shady folks in the pews. You show me an excited preacher, I'll show you some excited people in the pews. You show me a preacher with faith, I'll show you folks sitting around there that's got faith. You show me somebody with no faith, nobody in the congregation is going to have faith. Hmm. God help us when we're faced with battles. We're faced with struggles. We're faced with strife and storms and sometimes our very survival just to have faith. If God did not forsake you when you were high, he's surely not going to forsake you when you are low. God is for you and not against you and the very battle that you may be facing is the very instrument that God may be using to turn the world upside down. Sure. Just needs an instrument of faith. You say, preacher, does that really matter? Did I just not talk about David? Do you know how long ago that happened? And do you know there's very few places you can go where there's ever been a Bible that they don't know about David? Yeah. David and Goliath? <laughs> March Madness coming up. The David and Goliath the illustration will be used all over the airways which goes all over the world. Every time there's an underdog, it's a David and Goliath. Hmm? I'm trying to tell you, what could God do with just this crowd here tonight if we would let faith reduce our fear? What could God do? I don't know. One writer said, the world is yet to see one church totally sold out for the honor and glory of God. I won't even take the whole church. Just, what, just what's here tonight. What could we do for God if we just have faith? Huh? Well, I'd like to find out, wouldn't you? Sure. I'd like to see how big God's hand is. Sure. I'd like to see how much God can do. Yeah. It all starts with, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. God, help grow my faith that you can trust me in the midst of the battle. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. How's your faith tonight? That isn't measured by what you think. That's measured by what the Lord will tell you. Why don't you ask him, Lord, how's my faith? You taking on any giants, any mountains? I know you're facing struggles.
and storms. How's your faith? They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Lord, when situations arise and battles and struggles and strives, Lord, help us to not to fear, but to have faith. God, you've never forsaken us. Lord, you're not about to start now. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. And having done all to stand, to stand therefore. Lord, when fear begins to well up within us, I pray faith will squash it out. God, do something in our hearts tonight. Lord, I'd like to see what, what you would do with this crowd if we totally sell out, put our faith in you. God, what great things you could do. Help us, Lord, from the pulpit to the, to the back pew to just trust you, to follow you, and do what thus saith the Lord. Have your will and way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.